In keeping with the competitive nature of the Renaissance, the first thing that Brunelleschi did when he realized how great this invention perspective was, was to give a public demonstration. That would allow him to take credit for the invention of perspective. He actually went to Florence Cathedral. There's a baptistry by it, and that's depicted here. He created an image of the baptistry, poked a hole in it along the sight line or along the horizon line, and allowed people in the streets to come up and look through that hole at a mirror. This is the mirror opposite the painted image. The mirror reflected the painted image. Behind that was the real baptistry, the real building that Brunelleschi had created in his drawn image. The person looking through the peephole could tell immediately that Brunelleschi's drawn image was a perfect replica of the real thing, allowing Brunelleschi to take full credit for his invention and actually showing everybody at the same time how wonderful the system was. We have been using this system ever since. It became so popular with artists, all I can describe it as is a fad. It became something that everybody wanted to do. Uh, the example on the left of the screen is a drawing by an artist from the 15th century in Italy. His name is Uccello. And this is a crazy perspective drawing of a very complex vase. This is taking us back to Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper and a painting by Raphael of the School of Athens. Both of those also are perspective drawings that employ uh, Brunelleschi's system. Uh, so it's going to be picked up by the best of the best. Let's just take a look at Leonardo's image for a second. These are the perspective lines. They run along the top of the tapestries on the wall, each of the tapestries appearing to get smaller and smaller as they move into the distance, and the lines along the top getting closer and closer, vanishing at a single place, which is the head of Jesus, the center, the subject, the main subject of Leonardo's picture, running down the rafters of the ceiling, a series of lines that make this entire painted image, which was painted on a wall, appear to recede into the distance. If you are an art student today, you're still learning to use perspective. It was also popular throughout all of art history, so I just give you a couple samples. The one on the left, I'm pretty sure everybody knows. It is by the Norwegian painter from the 19th century. His name is Edvard Munch. This is The Scream, and it is full of perspective. The screamer who screams in our direction and tends to kind of block our path from entering this picture is in contrast to the very, very strong lines of perspective along the pathway which pull us in, almost suck us in, and the very strong lines of the railing that pull us in. So one of the reasons that this painting is as powerful as it is is because of the push and pull that's going on in the picture, and Monk knew this. The pathway pulls us in very rapidly, very quickly, and very powerfully, but at the same time, we're kind of blocked out with this individual who's screaming in our direction and keeping us from entering the space very easily. The painting on the right, 20th century artist, uh, his name is De Chirico. He's using perspective uh, for purposes of fantasy painting. You can see the um, perspective line at the base and at the top of this building. You can see perspective being used here, being used over here. And what De Chirico is creating is a sense of recession into space, creating a sense of, I would say, ominousness uh, and fear uh, if we were to enter the space of the painting. The point being, he makes the sense of space impressive, and that adds to the quality of fantasy he wanted to convey. But all of this is because of Brunelleschi. Now that we have perspective, we can also focus in, 
focus in on foreshortening, which is one of the most difficult things for an artist to learn. Foreshortening refers to a portion of a human body, sometimes the whole body, often a portion of the human form, or any object that is seen at an angle. It is particularly hard to draw things seen as an, at an angle because you actually don't see the full object, so it becomes difficult to accurately render it. This is an offshoot essentially of perspective and it is something used to advantage by artists to make images appear three-dimensional and as if they move in space. One of the masters of this is Michelangelo and the image that we have over here in the upper right is from the Sistine ceiling as God dividing the water so it's from his uh, creation scenes in the Sistine Chapel and it shows God the Father hurling through the skies along a diagonal suggesting movement but also depth in space. Part of the thing that makes that effective is foreshortening. We see for example right here the arm of God the Father viewed from an angle instead of being straight up in the air where we could see the full arm we're seeing it foreshortened. We're actually seeing a shortened form of the arm not quite as much of the arm as if it were fully extended in a straight view but powerfully effective in making the figure seem to move in space. Uh, the one below is one of the classic images in one point perspective and in foreshortening and it is an image by an artist, an Italian Renaissance 15th century artist referred to as Montaigne and this is his dead Christ. The image of Jesus is shown at an angle, the whole figure is foreshortened. If we were to stand that figure up, he'd probably be about three feet tall. So we're not seeing all of the body because we're viewing it from an angle. But it does make the picture appear to move dramatically into the distance into space. In addition to that, we have one point perspective. By one point, I mean one vanishing point. And you can see the slab on which the body of Jesus is placed. On both sides, there are lines. Those lines recede into the distance and would eventually vanish at a single point in the background. This is another work by Montaigne, and I do sometimes believe that artists take perspective and just start showing off. So I think that's what the artist is doing here. He's showing how good he was in handling perspective. He literally paints a space in a ceiling that looks like it's opening up to the sky. He's showing us a circle seen from below, seen in perspective. And it is filled with a series of small childlike cherub figures that are viewed in foreshortened imagery. In addition to that, he really plays some games with us. If you go over here, you're going to see a basket that he's painted being held up by a stick. It looks like the basket could tumble down on us. And also there are heads looking at us and a peacock up above. This is an incredibly playful image of perspective. And it also is, let's look at the room. A beginning of illusionistic ceiling paintings where artists are going to paint away the ceiling above us making us think that we're looking at the heavens. This is more of the perspective craze and it really was a craze, a fad embraced wildly by artists. This is by Uccello, a painting. He's the guy who did the crazy vase and perspective down here that we already looked at. This is a battle scene, but you know what? It's not a terribly convincing battle scene because Uccello was more concerned with perspective than he was with the realities of battle. He has all of the broken lances poised along orthogonal lines or perspective lines. So they become those lines that recede into the distance as if they were to meet at a single point. In addition to that, someone dies in perspective. The guy over here next to this line becomes another line moving us directly into the distance all headed towards the single vanishing point. Perspective in other words was one of the crazes of the Renaissance embraced avidly by all artists who came in contact with it.